After three days of not posting a video, this is Evan, the Xenogears enthusiast, bringing you a gameplay commentary for the Search and Destroy game type on Firing Range. Uh, I haven't posted a video in maybe three days. I would say that's largely because the internet here at school is back a little wonky and I couldn't get anything to upload uh, to YouTube. But now it's going to be working, so I'm back in business. Going to be posting a couple gameplay, gameplay commentaries back to back here to make up for lost time. Plus the one for today. So I've got a lot to do and I'm going to get started. Um, firing range is not much different from any other search and destroy game where everyone will rush when another spawns to start. I'm using the Galil because um, I can control the recoil really well. For one thing, there isn't that much recoil. And if I'm not rushing, I need to have a weapon that I can you know, shoot suitably from a long distance, but I can shoot on the fly. That usually winds up being the Falmus, the Galil, or the Commando. Which I think are the three top assault rifles of the game if you're not uh, using burst. If you're using burst, you should probably use the G11 or the M16. Uh, I don't really think it's worth silencing burst generally. I mean, maybe in Team Deathmatch it's fine, but in Search and Destroy, I usually don't silence burst because if I'm using burst, I'm looking for the one burst kill, and silence will reduce that at long ranges. So keep that in mind. If you're going to run burst, I personally think that the silencer is not worth it. But a lot of people still run it, so. I don't know, it's, it's up to preference, but I, I think I'd rather get the killing distance on the M16, which is probably the only reason to ever use it in search, because with everyone rushing spawns, it can be really dangerous to use in period. But if you get real good with it, I mean, it's still a viable option, or if you're just real, real comfortable with your sidearm, like the dual magnums in my case. But yeah, this is pretty standard search and destroy gameplay. Uh, run up here to this building. I mean, there's other options. You can run back towards the um, little shack not shack, but the little, the small tower that I'm facing towards now. You can run back that way, but if you do, you're probably going to get into an immediate engagement, or someone's going to be camping for you behind the two boxes um, around the corner, past the, the little building. The easiest way to counter that is just not to go. You can try to nade them out or get around them, but I've normally just died every time I've tried to get past the waiting guard at that point. So you, you can either rush down there and guard or shoot, throw some nades and try to get a kill. Or you can um, just run towards the middle to do what I did. Get up on that little platform is usually a good idea. Uh, because you get a good vantage point on anyone that storms the building to get your allies. There's inevitably going to be one in there. Or um, it's a good vantage point to see behind the trailer here, in the trailer, or back behind you towards the side I told you you might not want to run. All in all though, um, yeah, that's three different directions to watch and you can't watch them all. So I think the best way to do it is look where your allies run. If none of them run down either of these side paths, that means you probably shouldn't get up on that little uh, platform you jump to because you won't be able to watch all the vantage points. If one of your allies runs one of the directions, then you can face the other two or sort of you know, face the direction that's not one went. Can you expect someone to come from that direction? Search and Destroy is a lot about reading movements, and it's hard to describe it to you, or at least I'm not doing that great of a job, but it's it's kind of like playing Dean Deathmatch in some respect. Like, they're going to run, they're going to try to get into your spawn or get into your camping areas with the least, least resistance possible. So if you have an al no allies run down a particular path, you should sort of expect someone to come from that path, and at least if nothing else, you know it's not safe. So, you know, always face the directions no one else went or no one's facing because they're the most likely to get you kills. And getting kills ultimately will win you the game in Search and Destroy. Now I'm coming over here to plant the bomb, of course. I think they have one alive at this point. Um, firing range is a bit of a unpredictable animal for me. When I play on grid, you know, the strategy outlined in my grid video almost always works um, until someone starts specifically trying to challenge me. But in that case, you know, I, I'll fight the battle and I can probably win. So, it's... My strategy on grid is more rock solid. On search, I think, or not search, but rather on firing range, a lot more of the gameplay is honestly just going to be being ready to fight, uh, expecting a lot of people to come at you a lot. Um, if you're probably not shooting building to building, you're probably running around looking for kills. At least that's how most people are playing firing range. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I got a bit of a cold here. I don't know why I just woke up with it. <laughs> I haven't commentated in a couple days. I'm a little out of the groove since my internet was down, so this is sort of a warm-up commentary for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and post it either way, because I've got you know another one to do for the night. I can try to get up then. 
Run Sentry Gun in Search and Destroy. Uh, fantastic kill streak. Valkyrie rockets are good too, but Sentry Guns I kill less. I think that the best setup is probably Spy Plane, uh, Care Package, and I don't know. The last one's up to you. Probably Valkyrie rockets or Sentry. Personally, I do Spy Plane, Counter Spy Plane, and Sentry Gun because I can get all of them consistently. But mainly because um, Spy Plane is just one of the best in my opinion. I run a Counter Spy Plane because on a lot of maps I like to rush with the Spaz. And they'll shut down motion trackers, which is a big help. Because then I can still run Ninja. At that point I'm virtually undetectable. Um, you know, Are you all on Christmas break? I'm on my Christmas break and it's coming to an end here really soon. Makes me sad. Uh, a little down in the dumps about it. I... I you know, I like school fine, but it's my senior year, and I'm just kind of getting a little burned out. i got to still apply for those grad schools, and haven't got a lot of the work done I want to do this break. Someone else ever had that problem. They have, like, high aspirations for Christmas break, then they just really don't fall through any of them. Or you've got some time off work, and you got to get some stuff done, and you just don't. Yeah, I'm definitely having that problem right now. It's too bad that I already have Ninja Pro and uh, Hacker Pro. I actually managed to get a couple plants in this game. Getting plants is probably the hardest part of the ninja challenge and the... Not the hardest part of the flak jacket challenge. The hardest part of the flak jacket challenge is throwing nades back just because everyone still seems to run Simtex. Um, if you're a Simtex user, you need to give frags a chance. I know in Modern Warfare 2 is pretty much Simtex or bust, but uh, in Black Ops the Simtex, I don't really think it's as good as the frag. The frag you can bank off walls and sort of roll and it goes a little further. I mean... I find the Simtex to be more predictable when I use it, but the blast radius on the frag seems greater. I get more kills off the frag. Plus the grenades seem to have like a wonky roll effect where they don't seem to roll where gravity would take them, they seem to roll towards players. I don't I don't know why that is, and I don't really have a video to prove it, but that's just always how it feels, and a lot of my kill camps sort of reflect that where they're like rolling uphill to get people. Okay, now we're on the uh defense spawn. I kind of like to play a little risky at the start. I like to run up here and get on the corner um, so that the guy, if the guy runs up on the balcony of the building there, or second floor rather, he won't be able to shoot across and see you. But you can still get the guy who likes to rush out that doorway to try to get his early kills. That's how I like to play it, and I think it's a good way. Give it a shot. I mean, once you get one or two kills there, they're going to start expecting it. Um, unlike Grid, I really can't run the same route over and over on this map because people tend to um, react. Always try to shoot through that wall when you're going for this bomb if you're silenced because you can normally catch people. I've got this really cheesy camo on. I'm the last one on live right now and they've got a lot of people up, so I'm sort of running around like in a panic. Um, I'm the last one, I know they know where I am, so at this point I'm just trying to run around and catch them off guard, which so far has worked alright. I actually managed to hip fire him down. Then uh thought I was gonna clutch the match there, have like a nice little highlight for the video. Or highlight for my search and destroy gameplay really, but no. This guy gets me with his AK7. Bam. Not that it mattered, I mean he could have shot me with a pistol and would have killed me. I was all blood red from the AK7 guy. It's a new match. I pull up the pythons and the Galileo had a little bored. Swapping my weapons to keep myself entertained. Got a motion sensor down. Uh, this time I'm going to guard B. Like, I like to change it up a little bit, and sometimes people like to quick run this route. And just a lot of my allies weren't coming this way. So I was like, well, okay. Maybe if I go... And this is a great place to defend it, because you get a view of the entire bomb. As long as they haven't planted yet, it's good. I saw my ally die back there, so I'm kind of expecting him to come back in that back window. Someone's tossing flashes. Stunts. See a guy. Kind of jerking around a little bit, trying to avoid his shots, you know. Never stand still and you fire at someone, especially in search. He'll eat you. Then I get pretty mad at my teammate here, because I'm on my headset, and I'm telling him, like, let's go, let's go get him, he's going to plant. My ally's like, no, I don't, I don't want to go, man. I'm like, alright. So I go ahead and go. Kind of suicide spray him. I knew he had an ally with him for sure, but you know I didn't have. I was trying to just give up my life so he wouldn't plant the bomb, trying to be a little bit team player there, but yeah, he still managed to plant it. I mean, we're gonna win anyway, so I guess we. It's good that he planted it. Someone gets a defuse, but I kind of felt like I gave my life for the cause there and didn't get a lot of recognition for it. 
That's a 4 no, a four no gameplay. I did not have any friends playing with me. Uh, that's how I like to play Search and Strong well Firing done. Range. Let me know what you guys think, and if this video is any help to you.